Thank you, Peter. Our 32 teams and their passionate fans make the NFL America's largest sports organization. Last season, we finished our 100th season with over 15 million viewers per game, creating 41 of the top 50 broadcasts in the U.S. As CIO, I oversee the league's technology strategy, which includes making sure we leverage the best and greatest in new technologies to evolve our game, engage our fans, and protect and develop our players. In early March of this year, we were preparing for the NFL Draft, a live event where we welcome our newest players. The NFL Draft is about conducting the business of football, but it has now also grown into one of our marquee events, enjoyed by hundreds of thousands of fans over three days in an NFL city, and even watched by millions online and on television. The 2020 draft was to be in Las Vegas. But like the rest of the world, we learned about COVID-19 and we rapidly began to understand that the event would be much different in 2020. On March 13th, our offices shut down and the offices and facilities of our clubs soon followed suit. On March 24th, we had a meeting. I recently looked back at my calendar and it was aptly named Draft Contingencies and my, what a contingency we ended up needing. By then we had learned that we would not be able to gather in our facilities at all. So five weeks out, the league had to call an audible. The draft was officially going virtual. In the span of a few days, we went from a live broadcast in Las Vegas to hopefully being able to gather in our facilities, coaches and staff, to ultimately everyone, every player prospect, every coach, general manager, scout, and even our commissioner would need to be remote from their homes. The challenge was immense. With hundreds of questions about how we were going to pull it off, would we really be able to do it remotely? Could it be done without technical interruption? I remember holding my breath when asked that question by our commissioner, because typically televised broadcasts require a production truck and the reliability of satellite, which rarely fails transmitted back to studios for production. But this traditional route wouldn't work for all of the hundreds of remotes that we would need. So we had to figure out a new plan. We quickly got together with our partners and events. And one of the first companies we reached out to for help was AWS. The NFL and AWS have been strategic partners for many years now. And as the CIO of the league, I have leaned on AWS many times to help me solve things and challenges that we haven't done before. So right away, I reached out to my partners. Our head of technology, John Cave, actually suggested to us all on a big video call that perhaps we could carry the broadcast over the internet using AWS and mobile phones instead of broadcast satellites and high-end broadcast cameras. At first, it seemed impossible. ESPN, I recall, told us we've never done anything like this before. We had 85 draft picks to do, an even larger number of coaches, GMs, and staff, and we were scattered all over the country. How could this possibly work? Well, with ESPN, our broadcast partner, and AWS, we put our heads down and came up with a plan. Each player would receive two devices, one always on device that would show the emotion of the moment, the anticipation, and the excitement. It was actually the live from the living room shot, so to speak. And the other interview camera would to be used for interviews so that a player could step aside and have one-to-one -one interactions with their new teams, fans, and our commissioner. We created and shipped nearly 200 at-home production booths for top prospects, coaches, teams, and personnel, including everything from two mobile phones to lighting to microphones and tripods. And even further than this, we went through a full tech analysis of each location to ensure that if connectivity needed upgrading, it could be done in advance. And we also had every internet service provider on speed dial. This is Jordan Love from Utah State University. We're at the house, getting ready for the virtual draft. This morning I received my draft kit. Got my whole set up. This is where I'll be sitting. Hope everyone is staying home, staying strong. Can't wait to see everybody on Thursday night. We were also able to implement a fundraising platform that raised over $100 million for COVID relief. 
knowing that this draft could have that kind of impact is really what pushed our teams to keep working forward through this technical challenge so that we could pull this off, ultimately leaving a legacy in the league's history. AWS is a strategic partner and known to be a resilient cloud. And we knew if any organization could help us pull this off, it would be AWS. AWS deployed several of their top engineers to help us think through how we could simultaneously manage thousands of feeds to flow over the internet and up to ESPN in Bristol, Connecticut to put on the air. In order to make that successful, the IT team had to become somewhat of an air traffic controller for a live broadcast. But we also had to see problems in the broadcast ahead of them happening, utilizing the best in the crystal ball technology. You know, seeing the future, something that I know you all have to do. The always on video feeds were sent to EC2 instances running media gateways. ESPN pulled the feeds from EC2 and produced the show live. The NFL on-premise systems also received the feeds via Direct Connect for our own internal use, which included monitoring and archiving. We used AWS Shield Advanced, a dedicated service to monitor traffic real time and mitigate attacks to enhance protection of the NFL media gateways. We used multiple availability zones to minimize impact in the event of a failure. And just in case, even more contingencies, we had additional infrastructure ready to go in another region. AWS helped monitor and alert us when problems were around the corner using that crystal ball so that we could react in time for live television. It's one thing to be resilient in your day-to-day -day technology operation and a totally different thing to be resilient when you are live. This was my first live television experience and I can tell you it is not for the faint of heart. The AWS cloud infrastructure was the resilient backbone that helped us move thousands of feeds. Many people called this draft special, and it was special indeed. Raising over $100 million, the draft also had a record number of viewers, over 15 million tuning in for the first round picks, a 37% increase from the prior year, and totaling 55 million viewers or the course of a three-day event. What resulted by chance was the personal connections to the commissioner, prospects, owners, GMs, and head coaches. Social media was a testimony to our fans' involvement. Platforms were buzzing everywhere about every topic. Even our commissioner's jar of M&Ms became a subject of discussion, something that we could never have imagined. But at the core of all this madness, what was so special is how our fans were able to connect with the NFL. You see, they were going through much the same thing we were all going through. They were able to relate to what they were watching. All the people at home were going through the same thing as we were, coping with a pandemic, remote working with your families around, pets and many distractions. This intimate interaction could not have been planned for, and that's what made it so special and real. The 2020 virtual draft will have long lasting effects. How we plan and produce our broadcast is going to forever change and we will now always have, I believe, some virtual components to our draft. For example, our commissioner was able to personally welcome almost every player to the NFL instead of a select few that get to attend a live event. Going forward, we will continue to push and use AWS's cloud to enable and transform our broadcasts and events. Thank you.